I was super ready to do fun facts on Warmouth. Probably the funnest fact about this fish is that it is probably confused with a rock bass more than it's identified correctly as a Warmouth. That's not a fact, but that's probably the funnest fact. Yeah, what even identifies it from anything else? Let's find that out. Three to five reddish brown streaks. You don't want to see that usually. Radiating from the eyes and the gill flaps are often red. Has three spines in the anal fin, 10 spines in the dorsal fin. Teeth are present on the tongue, so there might be quite a bit that identifies it from other sunfish. Can grow to 12 inches. Let's hear it, fellas. What's your largest warmouth? I've never caught one. I don't think they're around here. The rock bass have five to seven spines on their anal fins. So just cast your gaze to the anal fin of these fish to identify which one's a warmouth and which one's a rock bass. Or you can just look at them and kind of know. Humans have super sophisticated brains and they're able to sometimes just look at stuff and know. Oh, the warmouth does not nest in a colony compared to other sunfish. This is a difference. So it kind of helps their survival that they don't need to nest in a colony. They can just do it anywhere as individual nests. Their species can adapt to more waters because of that. So they're survivors. Pictures of warmouths vary quite a bit. There's a really cool design where there's like almost bright blue dots everywhere. And there's kind of the meh looking, looking ones. There's ones with stripes, bold stripes. In these kind of cases, I think I am just gonna pick the craziest looking thing I can. Maybe we'll read comments. We haven't read comments in forever. Let's get to the comments. Bye bye fly. This is the Iowa Fly Massacre House. This is garage, that's what this shop is, the flies. Sometimes I leave the windows open at night for more to get in and then I close them. I literally just killed one. No mercy. Can you make a lure out of a carrot? Maybe start a series on making lures out of weird materials. The thing is, when you make lures out of things that hold water, they rot. Those, that thing's gonna rot. You'd have to dehydrate it to clear coat it. Maybe I'm overthinking it. Maybe I don't need to use the, this thing for more than a day and I can put through wire in a carrot. That's genius. I'm getting the urge to put through wire in a carrot and catch a fish. I feel like I abandoned the sophisticated art form of lure making catch a fish with a carrot instead of do the lure making. Let's stay focused and just do the lure making. I forgot how much I missed hearing fun facts while watching the build. Do you like hearing me read your comment while watching the build? Cause I don't have much to say to that. It's just, I read your comment. Maybe that was kind of surreal. You know who you are, Joshua. Yeah, that la that bird in the last video, if you didn't catch it, was a northern flicker. And I've never seen one in person until it was just out that window and I recorded it. Alabama State Bird. Get some exotic bird footage in this channel. Full Action City Marlin Bates Masterclass. That was the chair, I didn't fart. It's officially days later. Whilst editing, I realized I need more comments. Marlin Bates, did you contact me on here stating I won something? There's been a hard to keep up with scammer lately. Yeah, just tell them what they want to hear and all your wildest dreams will come true. The name of the account is like, you won something, phone number, yay, emojis. People are wondering if it's really me. You may want to turn your filter and bubbler off when testing your baits. That current may interfere with your result or it adds an extra layer of realism to your test tank. The fact that you're figuring out how to make your baits better each and every video just amazes me. What's the point of doing any of this if you're just gonna make the same thing over and over again, you know? I would be drooling with boredom if that, if I wasn't just trying to make something new. I think everybody can relate to that. Have your viewer been scammed through your form YouTube? Yeah, it looks like you might have because you're concerned about it. And it looks like this is a language barrier thing. I'm sorry, I can't be sorry actually. It would literally be immoral for me to be sorry about that because I have no control. And that would be just a useless drag on myself affecting other people that depend on me. I gotta keep spirits high. I can't worry about you. I'm not sorry. I believe that was all consistent. Nate, do you use Telegram? It says I won something from Marlin Bates. Or is this spam? I think people are really wanting it to be true that they're getting something from me. <laughs> I think that's how it's worded. You're gonna get something from me. Don't defer to the good feeling that you might be getting something from me. You're not gonna get anything from me unless you pay lots of money. Let's shut this down. Fun comments are over. Let's get that lead pot hot. Lead's hot. Just gonna smash it flush after I pour. I can still drill out lead if necessary. 
You can feel the weight. That feels good. How exciting. Next things next. Glue up. That is so loud having those two fixed right there. It's for when you're stopping and going or if it stops or goes. Either way, it knocks. It's weird putting wood glue on lead. Never done that before. Let's put some on a steel bearing too, just to say that I have. Just kidding, it's for structural reasons, not useless ones like that. Fantastic coverage. I get my popsicle sticks ready. Now they're ready. <laughs> It'll be good to see the difference in action compared to the minnow style version of this that we did in the last video. Now we have panfish with loud knocker and more space for fins to flap. I wanted to make sure to do that too. That is some space in there. Popsicle stick dents. That is loud. It'll do it with the slightest twitch. Oh boy. We're making a banger, fellas. Okay, let's not see any sparks. Funny that rattle knocks every pass. Those are some meaty looking gills, wouldn't you say? the ear. They kind of have an ear. It's really integrated into the gill plate. It gets dark and has red around it. Lobey. Nice little lobe right there. The eyes on this thing are gonna be crazy. They're gonna stick out. When I start this part of the carving, every time I just get a new blade, I don't mess around. Tupelo wood, which this is, can mash, deform, dent, it's soft. The rattle. Kind of trips me up. It feels like it shouldn't make that much noise from doing so little. I'm barely tilting it. I really felt like overdoing the head on this bait. Real war mouths do not look like that. <laughs> I'll be the first to say it. Oh, there's my thumb. Hello. This is a crappie war mouth hybrid. 
look. It's just such an intense name. I wanted to give it intense features. I really should make everything in some random weird way that comes to mind in the moment. That's the best kind of stuff. Some burnt wood down there. I'm gonna have options. I got a half inch right here when it comes to eyes. A little less than half inch. I don't even know. 33 60 ninths. Let's go with that. That whole space is a half inch. It'd be quite the eye. Let's see what the other one looks like. I'm liking 33 60 ninths, AKA 10 millimeter. I get an awkward amount of satisfaction from centering a Forstner bit around a circle. So the Forstner bit's gonna be angled this way a bit. We will not cut in as deep over here as we will over there. It'll give the eye that downward angle. And with the big glass dome look, that looks good. Pectoral and side fin stuff, 16th inch. Dorsal, anal, and tail fin, 3 16th inch. Cut them out. Have to undercut that enough to be able to slip that little tab in there and sticking off the body just a little bit. And if this is gonna work out, the corners need cut down too. That's important to not overlook. Probably a useless tip to everybody else and it's just something stupid I overlooked. Cut your corners down even deeper. All right, those are coming off of the body just perfectly. Next up is lead holes. Two in the belly and probably a 3 8 inch hole in the head as well. I think that was 33 69 actually. Okay, main concern, don't go too deep and get into the weight transfer chamber. Yes, we just poured lead before sealing. I'm that confident. That's so I can hold on to it while I put it against a sander. Oh my. That's so the fin doesn't move.
Rear hook hanger on the fan that can be installed already. The all the others are going to be twist wire stuff. So much work to do on a bait like this. Got the joint hardware installed. Everything friction fits nicely. I'm going to fit everything and show you. Dude. How nice is that? It's kind of funky cuz it goes up over the joint, but everything can just bend and swim. It's like it's soft plastic, but it's not. Don't forget the rattle. Oh my goodness, what's it gonna do? Wow. That's not even, that's not heavy in the front or the back. That is just perfectly level. Pretty much a suspender. I, if I put one clear coat on that, there's an updraft because of those bubbles, and those bubbles are pushing it down. So it's just a perfect slow sink. It's perfect. I didn't change one thing about the lead. It was all a guess, and it's perfect. Sorry, fish. Moving on. <laughs> Getting cold outside. He's even got a little cricket. I don't want to leave him right there because this is a floor mat. If any, he'd step on him. You gonna eat the cricket? Oh, <laughs> he went for me. <laughs> It's pretty warm outside right now. He should go back out. Oh, he's gonna go in the tube. He went in the tube. All right. I guess it's a decent place to live, you know? I never step right in that corner, so. Starting with white. Neon yellow. Going on the top and the top sides ish. Fluorescent aqua on the sides, very lightly. We have gold, we have red, we have highlight turquoise, lots of it, and 0.6 ounces of clear coat right here. We'll get this on the bait. I'm gonna go hang out with my family. It seems like they miss me. Been working on this bait all day. I'm gonna give those slots two light coatings. They're thick enough. I did that intentionally. Water impenetrability. You notice I unnecessarily drilled a hole right there, even though I have a hook hanger coming off the anal fin. Whoops. That color right there is just gonna be the spots though on this thing. Spots and bars. It's hard to find. There is a wonderful design on there. Both sides. They're pretty similar. They're not exactly the same. This side's face is way better than that side just because the lines are more detailed and cool. Second try though, that's why. Over that fabulous design is going a bunch of detail magenta black and then we're gonna fade down to detail red violet. And I got a little baggie of some special reddish stuff to uh, spritz over the top of all that. Detail red violet's pretty bright, I have to be careful.
raw umber to make that purple kind of go away. This color leans on the side of green. So it was like that. Now it's a deeper red, not so fake looking. Fancy reddish powder mixed into a translucent base with correct balancing clear reducers and stuff to shoot nicely out of this airbrush. Dumped all of it in there and dropped a little on my pants. This is color shift. The sparkle is going on. We're gonna add it slow. Man, that's a cool color. I'm about to remove a lot of masking fluid and you really don't wanna miss any. It become very obvious after clear coat. Wow, this is bright. That is some contrasting color. <laughs> it's pretty rare that I do this, but this is gonna be a three clear coat bait. I wanna put all of that that we just did, masked off and peeled off and made look pretty, under its own clear coat. lost quite a bit of detail in the carvings due to that second clear coat. It has like a finish worthy coat on it right now, but it still needs all of its fins and stuff. But I went back in with pearl white to define the gill structure a little better. There might be other colors I think of right now that I should put on, one sec. All right, that brings it out a little bit more with some pearl white and black. Yet another masking fluid application. Gotta be careful with this one. This will really determine how cool the gills look. While that's drying, we can put detail magenta black on the bottom of the fins. It helps to keep that wrapped around the edge. We went from pearl white all over the bottom half of this bait, gold scales on the top, and then pearl wine. I didn't go too heavy with those gold scales either. We got it fading away on the joint too. That's gonna keep all that contrast. They're pretty much just translucent scales, pearly translucent stuff over the already beautiful stuff we painted. against the really dark background that comes out. Gorgeous. Onward. Sunburst in the brush. Just kind of on the belly of the front piece, way down there by that fin slot. It's there. Should I make it more there? I don't know. Okay. Detail. Smoke. Black. Smoke, Bobber. That's pretty groovy.
Okay, I just went pretty hard with the color. What did I do? Painted the top black. Redefined the gills with more pearl white. Gave it a nice lobe ear. Straight jet black. Put a sweet little red fading around that ear. That brought up the warm mouth vibe. They have that. Blue. All of that hand painted pearl whiteness blue went over the top of that. Oh, I even did stuff to the fins. So every fin that kind of faces the bottom when this bait's upright got white. The fish looks like it's dipped in white and brought back out. Dry fitting. Those look like fins. Those pectoral fins really don't uh, appear much on this fish. So I kept it nice and plain. Got my hole punches, got my thing that the hole punches punch into. 33 69s. All right, that's the eyeball backing. I'm not gonna use the material I punched out on those two. I'm gonna use them to paint irises and pupils. They're stencils, but we will use these. Foil through glass. It like magnifies the shine. Magnifies the shine. I just said that. Spray pupil, spray iris, paint eye, glue on lure. You gotta mark the center of these things when you do the spray on pupil, cause you just can't tell. You just can't line it up right otherwise. Helps you know how much to spray too, cause that dot disappears into the darkness. It's a one millimeter thick iris. Some bright tranny red, just on one side. That was detail burnt orange. That looks like fire, literally, whoa. I'm gonna put the red on the bottom, yeah. Everything has a clear coat on it, just like that. Boy, is it looking good. Tomorrow we assemble and test. This is like a very hard, real fish. Hard and loud. Okay. I got a new microphone. Hopefully it's not worse. I see it doing a glide. It is not floating. Cool. Oh my goodness, it has a swim like the, the moon eye. I can replicate that stuff. That is amazing. I don't mean to be boastful. I said that very loud and proud. <laughs> I can replicate the jointed fins, two-piece kind of swim bait action stuff. It sinks like one inch a second, perfectly flat. Wow, it has a good glide at 360s. <laughs> Once again, I'm just playing with the action of a bait. You can get it to do so much weird stuff, like doot, 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 and glide off to one side. Wow. This one's fun. I just want to make them like this now. If you're wondering what rod this is, I forgot I had this. I received it years ago from Bakken Fishing, but I was moving or something. I don't know. I was so busy. I put it up, I never got it back down, and I forgot about it. But Bakken Fishing, this is a pike rod. Eight foot, custom made. It's official. I want it to be like my picture taking rod because there's so, many, so much fancy weaving and tying and stuff. Link in the description to the guy who made this. Should have uh, done that years ago. <laughs> I don't know why it's not getting bit. Might have to try a new spot or something.
Tis the season to fish for hours and not catch fish with big swim baits. <laughs> there's no need to prolong this. And there's really no reason to add any more hook rash to this beautiful lure. Why do that any more than necessary? And I guess I just took a week off. I mentioned on Instagram a week ago that I wasn't gonna post on Sunday, last Sunday. It's gonna be weekdays except Friday, Monday through Thursday, afternoon evenings-ish. And it's random now to uh, compensate for stuff that takes longer than a week to make. Maybe multiple part series of crazy stuff too. I really wanna start that again. I have this ornamental arowana swim bait design every scale carved in a unique, fancy, ornamental way, even. I've been dreaming about this bait. This could be the next video, and this is just the first part to that series. See, I even wrote arowana on a whiteboard. That's how serious I am about that. Anywho, video's over. On to the next bait. <laughs> Have your viewer been scammed through your form YouTube? If you don't want to see that, usually. Hello. I think that was 3369. Magnifies the shine. Popsicle stick dent. Kind of trips me up. I guess it's a decent place to live. 